Memorials and tributes are pouring in for U.S. Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She died yesterday after complications from pancreatic cancer. She was 87 years old. Now, Ginsburg was a feminist icon, only the second woman to be appointed to the top court in the U.S. and heralded for her advocacy of women's rights, civil liberties, and the rule of law. Now, just weeks ahead of a presidential election, her death is sending shockwaves through Washington and has sparked political debate over the timing of her replacement. Let's go now to senior Washington editor Lindsay Duncombe. Lindsay, thanks for joining us again. Let's talk about what all this could mean, how it might play out in the upcoming presidential election. Well, in a way, what this does, John, is it just sloshes gasoline on an already combustible political situation because this is likely to motivate voters on both sides, Republicans and Democrats. Donald Trump had already appointed two conservative justices to the Supreme Court, and the ability to do that a third time is something that could motivate uh, voters who may have been turning a little bit on Trump, especially those voters who are voting because uh, what they want to do is end legal abortion in the United States. But if we look at the motivation, it is also very strong on the other side. In fact, John, in the hours after Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death was announced, a Democratic fundraising site raised $100,000 a minute as people mm -hmm pour money into this fight. We're just 45 days away from this election. And what is happening now is Mitch McConnell, the uh, Senate Majority Leader, has said that what he wants to do is get Donald Trump's nominee to a vote on the floor of the Senate. Now, that is happening in the context not just of the presidential election, but remember, a number of these senators that would be part of that confirmation process process are also running to keep their seats. And what this does is it puts those culture war issues, including abortion, right at the front of what those election fights will look like. Okay, so McConnell pushing to fill that seat, but it's the same McConnell who four years ago had an entirely different reaction to a similar situation. Let's talk about the reaction to what he's saying now. There is outrage from Democrats that Mitch McConnell would want to move so quickly to fill this seat. Outrage, but not surprise, because McConnell has signaled that in the past couple of years. The outrage goes back to when Antonin Scalia died in 2016. He died in February, John, so that is nine months before the election. But Mitch McConnell, leading the Senate, held by Republicans, did not hold a hearing for for then-President Barack Obama's chosen nominee, Merrick Garland. And the reason that he did that is he said that it was an election year and it would be up to the voters to pick a new president and it would be up to that president uh, to pick a new nominee. That was nine months. Now we're talking about 45 days. So that's where this outrage about the hypocrisy of that from the Democrats is, is really brewing. And it was very clear that what the Democrats wanted Want is uh, to push this back until the election is over, uh, until a new president or Donald Trump is inaugurated in January. And that was the message from the Democratic nominee and former Vice President Joe Biden. Here's what he said. Let me be clear that the voters should pick the president and the president should pick the justice for the Senate to consider. This was the position of the Republican Senate took in 2016, when there were almost 10 months to go before the election. That's the position the United States Senate must take today. And uh, the election is only 46 days off. And this was obviously on Ruth Bader Ginsburg's mind, John, as she was preparing to die. In fact, her uh, granddaughter has told NPR that her final, or, or, or she dictated a statement saying, my most fervent wish is that I not be replaced until a new president is installed. History unfolding. Thanks for helping us follow it, Lindsay. Senior Washington editor, Lindsay Duncombe.